everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Holly of RenewalFitCoach.com and this video is going to be a review on the ProSource trekking poles as well as informative about what some of the benefits of hiking or trekking poles are. So I'm going to test these out, see how they work, see if they're helpful and then give you some of the reasons why you might want to try these out. really great hike with my trekking poles and I'm going to continue to show more of what that hike was like and how I use them as I describe to you one the benefits of using trekking poles and why you might want to use them two some simple tips on how to set them up and how to use them to be the most effective and then three a review on the pro source trekking poles and some of the special features that they have that will benefit your hiking Hiking poles are really great for reducing strain on joints. Now this is a little bit debated among science. There's no clear scientific consistent proof that it reduces joint strain, but many users do find that you feel less pain in your hips and your knees and your ankles when you use the poles. And I definitely felt that as well. Um, because you're kind of distributing your weight a little bit differently and now your arms are more involved, it puts a bit more of the weight into your upper body and therefore your your knees and your sensitive joints are taking less of the strain. Um, I found this particularly going uphill and downhill because you can kind of change the the force and direction of your body and where um, the pressure is coming from. And so I just, I didn't feel as much strain in my knees as I typically do. Walking downhill with trekking poles is way easier than walking without them. It's really great for helping with balance and traction and kind of helping to prop you up. Um, but also it's just really helpful for balance so that if you're going down a steep downhill or even a gradual one and you're just not as good with balance or you hit some unstable surface, you can push your pole into the ground and kind of help push yourself back to stabilize you. Um, it kind of is like, it's kind of like being a quadruped, like a four-legged animal where now you have these longer arms almost that extend to kind of help keep you more balanced um, like it would with a mountain lion or a bear or something where they can be on all fours. So it's much more stable, makes you feel much more safe. Really great if you have any minor injuries or your balance is off, someone who's maybe older, um, just needs a little bit more security. This is a really big help to make it feel a lot safer, especially going downhill. Increased speed is a great reason to use trekking poles as well. I found that being able to push back behind you, it kind of helps propel you up the mountain as you're going. And so because you have that extra force and that extra propulsion to push you, it's so much easier to go so much faster. So you really can get through your hike a bit quicker and you're really not feeling like you're working quite so hard. You're just moving a little bit faster and it feels much easier. Because of that upper body involvement, you're going to find that using trekking poles actually increases your caloric burn. Um, and that is proven with studies that the use of poles, whether it's in things like just Nordic walking, where you're kind of doing flat walking with the poles, or you're using it in a hike, that you are going to burn more calories, which on one hand can be an awesome benefit, because um, who doesn't typically want to burn more calories, right? Um, on the other hand, if you are doing a really long endurance type of hike, then you might want to be careful with how you're using them and be aware that you're not using too much upper body and putting in too much um, force into using the hiking poles or going too extreme with them in terms of speed and power um, so that you can conserve your energy for longer. As I stated, using the poles are going to involve your upper body a bit more. So one of the benefits of that is that you're also going to increase your arm strength, which is awesome. So you're going to get be using more of your shoulders, your triceps, your back, your biceps to hold the poles, to carry them and to push yourself up the mountain and to prevent yourself from falling as you're going downhill and give you some st stability. So not only are you going to kind of increase your arm strength, but at the same time, by holding the poles near your body, having your arms upright the whole time where they're by your sides rather than hanging down by your sides, one of the extra benefits that you might find is you actually have better circulation in your hands. So because your hands aren't hanging down by your sides, collecting blood in them, but instead they're at 90 degrees by your uh, closer to your heart, you're going to find that you might experience a better circulation in your upper body and in your hands. So one of the huge benefits 
of these poles is the snow disc that comes with it. You can slip these on and then you have the little tip poking out. It really helps your pole from sinking all the way down into the snow. And they're also incredibly helpful for going uphill and downhill when the snow is uneven, you don't know if you're gonna fall through, you don't know if something's steady to kind of check the ground first and then help propel you up when it's slippery, it's icy. So I'm finding these to be extremely helpful in the snow. Poles are great for helping to push things out of the way and clear obstructions as well for kind of testing the ground to see where you should step. So it's really great when there's things like, if there's poison oak on the trail and it's kind of in your way, you can't just push that out. So it's helpful to have a stick. Um, you can just push that, that brush or debris or whatever out of your way. If there's some kind of little rocks in the way, you can push those out. And additionally, it helps to kind of check on obstructions and check on your pathways, whether it's crossing a stream or it's going up or downhill to help see are the rocks stable? Can you stand on them? Do you need to push some things out of the way so you can just go on solid dirt and not have to worry about big rocks in the way? Um, so they're really helpful just practically to kind of get things out of your pathway. Now, like with anything, there are tons of benefits with using hiking poles, but of course there's a couple of cons also. One of those is they can kind of get in your way. If you're really having to almost like boulder or climb up hills, then it's a little bit tricky to have poles attached to you. Um, so it's a little bit tough to try and get uphill if you have the poles in your hands, or if there's something like if you need to stop and have a snack or something, it's kind of hard when you have these extra pieces of things that you're carrying. By carrying poles, that does mean that you are carrying something else with you. They are very lightweight, but it's a little bit of additional weight and it's something that you have to carry. Just things like that, you're, you're not hands-free. So some tips on how to use the poles to make them a little bit more effective for you. One, make sure you set them up at a proper height. So when you're using the poles, they should be at about 90 degrees. Um, so your arm right here, down to your elbow, should have about a 90 degree angle. So your arms aren't way up here or way down here. So approximately there, you can kind of play with it and see what feels the most comfortable to you. Do note that going downhill, you might want to lower them just a little bit because otherwise they're going to end up a lot higher next to your body. So most comfortable position, approximately 90 degree bend at the elbows. Make sure you stay relaxed when you're using trekking poles. It is easy and I did find myself hiking up my shoulders and kind of doing this. So that can happen. So it's really important to keep your shoulders down and relaxed and not start carrying all this tension in your shoulders and neck, which are just gonna, one, wear out your energy much faster, but also probably create a lot of neck tension, possibly even headaches that you just don't wanna deal with. So make sure you're staying relaxed. Make sure you're not clenching them too tightly and doing a death grip. Keep your hands relaxed, keep your shoulders relaxed. You're not using extra energy that you don't need to be using. Do make sure to use the grips and the straps on the hand. So there's some ergonomic grips, different poles are gonna look up a little bit differently. So you're gonna put your hands through the straps. This one is adjustable, most should be adjustable. So good to have it where it's not too tight, where it's not gonna be cutting circulation or so tight that if you were to fall, it's gonna pull on your hand or wrist or potentially cause a hand injury. So you're gonna adjust the straps and then just put your hands in that ergonomic position. Might not fit everyone, because obviously everyone's hands is different, but first finger here, the rest of the fingers on the grips. But definitely wear the straps, it's a huge help. If you don't have that, it's gonna be so easy to drop your poles, lose your poles, have it slide down a mountain. Um, so definitely use the straps when you're putting on the poles, and then keep a nice comfortable grip. Use the proper tip for your trekking poles. So most should come with a cover, kind of like this. These are optional snow discs, so if you're not in the snow, you probably don't need those, but you can use those if you want them. And then there's kind of the pointed end that's a lot sharper, it's gonna dig into the ground much better. So depending on the train you're on, if you're on, you know, if you're just walking on the streets or pretty light hiking, you can just leave that top on there. If you need a little bit more traction and something to help ground any loose gravel or anything like that for you, then this open tip is gonna be a little bit better. And then when you're in the snow, you're gonna leave these off, but put the cap on, which just screws on and off. It's just a twist on and off thing, which will help prevent you from sinking into the snow. 
You also want to make sure that you're using a proper movement pattern when you're using the poles. So there are different ways to use them and they're not necessarily right or wrong. It just depends on what you're doing. So if you're going up a steep uphill, you might be using both the poles to grab the ground and help pull you up. If you're just kind of doing your normal, normal trail, then as your left foot steps forward, your right arm and the pole will go out and then switching sides. So opposite arm and leg are moving as you're going up and down the hill. And finally, I'll finish with the review of the ProSource trekking poles. These poles are a lightweight aluminum. Um, I think in total, they equal just over a pound for the two of them, so super light. Um, if you need to stick them in a bag and carry them, you're not gonna feel a whole lot of extra weight. A great benefit of these poles is the compass that sits right on top. There's a tiny little compass, which is great for something like the hike I did today because everything was covered in snow. It was really hard to figure out where we were going and we had to kind of keep taking different paths. So anyway, it's helpful to have a little um, compass on your hiking poles where it's easy to see to help you not get lost hiking because that's one of the biggest dangers with hiking. So that's really helpful little um, attribute of these poles. Moving down from the compass, as I mentioned, there is a strap attached to these. So I definitely wouldn't use any trekking poles without a strap. And it is adjustable. It's just a simple little pull buckle to tighten or loosen. So real simple to use really nice feature. And then the grips, which are ergonomic. These ones are just plastic. Um, I would note on these, probably my least favorite feature of these poles is the hand grips. They're just not super comfortable. Um, you could probably find others with much more cushioning. So there's not a lot of cushion. In this hike, I did have my gloves on for quite a bit, so I didn't really notice it too much. But for a really lengthy hike, this could start to irritate your hands just a little bit. They are adjustable in size, so these ones have this part that just twists and it shows you the height that you're at. You can go up just a little bit or you can go down more depending on how tall you are. And then again at the bottom there's a second section that you can adjust. So this section pulls out as well as this. So very highly adjustable um, for people of various heights and they're really easy to use. It's just a simple twist and lock. Really easy to use, easy to adjust. Um, which also means that they're easy to um, unscrew and put together so that they become much shorter. And then when you don't need them, then you can pack them away in a backpack or just carry the two in your hand. Easy to travel to and from wherever you're going. So good, easy, adjustable capabilities with the poles. And of course, probably the best benefit of the poles is they are affordable. At just $19.99 at prosourcefit.com, you are not gonna break the bank to try these out if you're not sure if you want them or if they're gonna work. Great to go with something that's a little bit more affordable. Um, they are still quality, they work well. Um, and if you use code HOLLY10 at prosourcefit.com, you can get the polls for an extra 10% off. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or additional comments or tips, please leave them down below. And of course, subscribe to my channel to get more fitness tips workouts and product reviews. And you can always find me at renewalfitcoach.com for personal training and nutrition coaching. Thanks and see you in the next video.